Hi family, we have a Good Friday dinner here that we made. We had some fish, we stew some and we fried some. And we have corn on the cob, Brussels sprouts, corn muffin and sweet potatoes. A traditional Good Friday dinner. Hope you all enjoy. Here we have some sweet potato to boil in water, but I put a bit of salt and a little oil in it. And covering it with a piece of foil and leave it to boil, leave it to boil. And what's the purpose of the foil? When I cook provision, potato or anything else, I put it to, put a piece of foil over it, mostly to steam it. So the potatoes have come up to a boil. As you can see, we're boiling away and the foil paper is helping it to steam. So we're just gonna turn down the stove and let it keep going. And over here, we have our oil preheating to fry the fish. I'm mixing flour and breadcrumbs to flour the fish to fry. That's one of my favorite seasoning these days, tahini. And this tahini is a blend of chili peppers with lime and some salt. It adds a really nice flavor to it. And that lime will work well with the fish. Yum. Okay, so here we have our seasoned fish that's been marinating for a few hours now. And we're gonna dredge it in the flour to get it ready to fly. Fly? Fry? Yeah. <laughs> to get it ready to fry. You can season your meat and your fish however you like. Seasoning is a very personal thing. For us, there's some green seasoning on here, the homemade green seasoning that we mentioned in the pillow video, as well as garlic salt, tahini, some garlic, black pepper, pepper sauce. Mrs. Dash. Some Mrs. Dash, some mustard. Yeah. and other things. If you want to see how we season things, you can check out that pillow video. It's pretty similar, but sometimes we tweak it depending on what we're making. All right, so those are our first few pieces. We do have some oil that's heating up on the stove right now. We're gonna grab our little basket for it so that we can deep fry these bad boys. Let's go ahead and check the temperature. And now this is some canola oil. We have used this once before, which is why it's a little bit darker, but it is clean oil. It's been strained out and we only fried like french fries or something in it, so it's good to go. Right now it is at 400 degrees. So that's a little hotter than we need actually, but it should make it nice and crispy. All right, so we're gonna add our basket to the pot first. And that way when it's time to take the fish out, all we'll have to do is remove the basket. And then we'll gently drop the fish one at a time. And then we'll just add our cover to it to stop it from splattering a bunch. And as you can see, the oil started to rise up a bit as we added the fish. So you don't wanna overcrowd your pan and you don't wanna put too much oil because you do not wanna start a fire. Cause it's bubbling pretty high. Ooh, and that's hot. Let's see. Bubbling pretty high. I'm just gonna set a quick timer for about five minutes. And then we'll check the fish and it should be about ready. Again, you can use a thermometer to check the temperature, make sure it's cooked through, but it should be nice and crispy by then. Okay, so here we have some corn on the cob. These happen to be, ooh, they are very frozen. They're actually sticking together. <laughs> 
these happen to be frozen we are gonna roast them in the oven but for now I'm gonna put them in the oven to help them thaw out and defrost some more before we flavor them and put them to roast so as you can see there's like ice and frost on some of them still but that's okay fresh corn works even better for this and is even easier I suppose but um, frozen works as well. Want to space them out a little bit. Make sure they're not like super duper crazy close. Because the idea is to get them to defrost and dry out a lot of that liquid that's in there. And then we'll add our flavors. At 400 degrees. This one, let's set a 30 minute timer. Oh. Put these over here again. Yeah. Ah, perfect. So the potatoes are ready to be taken off of the fire. And then we're just going to drain off the excess water. And then right before we serve it, then we just peel the skin off and it's ready to go. Our fish is still looking good. That timer is about to go off. There it go. Let's see. Looking real good. So now what we can do is we can just grab the basket on out. All right, timer, we hear you. We hear you. Give it a good shake, get the excess oil out. And this pan is awesome because it has this little latch, if you can see it there, that allows the basket to hook right on the side of the pan there. And this pan has obviously been well loved. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll just make sure it's laid out on the paper towels so that it can drain any excess oil. This part started to break up as I was taking it out. So we decided to try a piece of the filet that was breaking up a little bit. And y'all, the crunch and the flavor, oh my gosh. We were just talking about the pot. Um, there is a way to clean the pot and to scrub it down really well. Mommy, what do you use? Oven cleaner. Mm -hmm. Oven cleaner, got it. To clean the outside, you basically just use oven cleaner and steel wood and it scrubs off all of the oil and stuff. But ours is obviously well seasoned and well loved and we're proud of that, okay? And my sister just mentioned like, isn't it so much easier when you use a deep fryer? Because of course you can fry the fish on the stove itself like in a shallow pan, but it takes a lot longer because you can only put so much fish it doesn't fry them evenly. You have to flip them. You have to do all that stuff. This is much simpler. You just drop it in. It doesn't absorb any more oil than the other way does, and it's much easier. So right at this point, we're just waiting for our oil to come back up to temperature. You'll definitely want to do that in between batches so that the fish will cook evenly. Again, we didn't necessarily need it to be at 400 last time. We just got a little overzealous, but anything around 350, 375 usually works well. But that first batch came out so crispy, y'all. It came out so crispy. Right now we're at about 325. So we'll just wait a little longer before we drop our next batch. And this is an awesome pot overall. It also comes with like a glass cover, a glass lid to it. And like I said, it comes with this basket already and this little oil catcher. I don't know what it's called, but this lid to trap like the oil and stuff and to allow steam to escape. Um, so it's a really handy pot. I'll actually try to find a link to it and link it down below for you if you're interested because this pot is clutch. We use it so often, so much as you can see. <laughs> okay, so the oil is back up to a little over 350. We're gonna go ahead and get the next batch of fish in. So just gently dropping it in, waiting a second in between each so that they don't stick together and of course not crowding your pan. 
so that they don't stick together. And we'll just do one more. Okay, so we leave the fish to drain a little bit to get the excess oil off on some paper towels. And then we transfer it to like a serving dish. And y'all, they are looking so good. As you can see, these are a little lighter than these. You can definitely fry your fish however you want. We often end up with a mixture and then you can choose whether you like them extra crispy and darker or more like a golden brown. Delicious. Okay, so now we're about to put some Brussels sprouts on to steam. Here we have the washed up and sliced up Brussels sprouts with some diced onions and minced garlic. We're gonna add some margarine to that or butter. You could even do oil mm. if you prefer. Then some flavorings. Right now we have some garlic pepper. And this is like a blend of garlic powder, salt, pepper, and other spices. Mm -hmm. And then just a little dash of garlic salt. Not trying to overdo it. And then how do we get this started on the stove, Mama? Put a bit of water huh? and put it on the small burner. So on low heat with the splash of water? Yeah. Sounds good. All right, and so we just added a splash of water, about a quarter to a half a cup, depending on how much Brussels sprouts you have. As you can see, there's not much liquid in here at all. We're just a little bit at the bottom of the pot. The idea is to add enough water so that it can steam the Brussels sprouts. And as it cooks down, we're able to stir it up and combine all the flavors together. So you can see the pot started off pretty full and now it's cooked down substantially. Then keep going. We'll cover it back and let it go on like medium low heat. The brutal sport is ready. It's steam all the way down and it's cooked already. Now for the taste. It's just right. Just right. Mm -hmm. Then we have some butter softening on the stove for the corn on the cob. I'm gonna put some oil in the frying pan to make some gravy to, for the fish. Some oil before. And some flour. to make like a thick gravy. I'm gonna brown the flour for a while and then I'm gonna add some onions to brown up also. I'm gonna add some onions. You didn't brown it yet though, right? No, the onions are, this is, we'll brown while the onions are brown Okay, so you don't have to brown the this flour, flour first brown, brown, before no. you do the onions? No, it's just gonna go in. Interesting. You also put the, the flour just to melt up in the oil. And then you put the onion. Okay, and so as the onions brown, the flour, the flour brown brown it. also, yes. Interesting. I never knew that. Then you learn something, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put the onions in. Yeah, that's in the flour. The flour is just to give the gravy, the fish gravy a little thickness. Most of the time we use the, like if you fry it in a frying pan, we use what's left in the frying pan to do, to do this. You can bring your onion to your likeness. After that, I'll add some tomato. A little black pepper. I put some garlic pepper. That's just a little. A little. And my one of my favorite seasoning Thai.
Then I'll add some water to make the gravy. Put the fish in. Some of my children like it wet, some doesn't, so yeah, I'm just gonna wait not a lot of it. Too much. Y'all won't eat all that wet fish. <laughs> no, go ahead, do what you're doing. Bye bye, Chris Peters. <laughs> We're gonna miss you. Over there. Bye bye, mm. Crunchy. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's a taste. Add a little more water. Oh, it's getting too thick. Okay, so now it's time to make our flavored butter that's going to get brushed all over our corn on the cob. We start with some softened butter, add all of the seasonings, mix it, mix it, mix it, and then brush it onto the corn that we had defrosted in the oven. If you use fresh corn, you can just brush the mixture directly onto it before it goes into the oven. And oh my gosh, it comes out so delicious, so tender, so yummy. Go ahead and grab one. I won't tell nobody. Next, it's time to mix up our batter for the corn muffins. We start with some warm milk, add in all of our mix-ins. The warm milk helps the butter to melt and the honey to dissolve. And then by adding the whole corn kernels at the end there, you get a little bit of corn in every bite. It is so delicious. And then of course, you know, gotta top it off with a little butter. What would corn muffins or cornbread be without butter? Come on. And so here she's just peeling the potato, getting the skin off. Now that it's already boiled, the skin is so soft, she just kind of scrapes it off with a knife and the potato on the inside is buttery soft and smooth without breaking up in the water when she boils it. So here are the sweet potatoes, ready to go. And just as I was hoping, they are thankfully coming right out of the muffin tin. They're not breaking or crumbling and we didn't have to use like a cupcake liner or what have you. You could do that if you like, um, but this is a really good pan. I'll link it below if I can find it. And then of course I sprayed it with like the oil spray. So that made it very easy for it to come right out. And clean up is a breeze. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Also, let us know in the comment section down below what you thought of it, and be sure to subscribe and come back for our future videos. Next time, we're gonna be making something else delicious, and we can't wait to see you there.